Okay, traced a little something, found that that part there is a capacitor, which is the same as that capacitor, which is on the other side. Oh, the factory connecting power supply across it and scoping on the output of the TL494, which is there. That's pin 1 right there. See that? And when I scope at pin 8, which is this. Pin 8 and pin 9, 10, 11. Yeah, cool. Both outputs are active. And I was a blind ass because there are transistors that drive the transformer. You can see one here, another here, and there is zero transformer. Okay, let's see. Is that signal coming to the basis of here? Okay, on one of them. Ugh, that's quite crikey, but there is. Let's move the probe to this one. And... Yeah, this one is not much better. Oh my goodness. So what that tells me? I check the transistors, they are not shorted, they are not open, they seem to be fine. And the oscillator on the TL494 is oscillating and there is something on the output. Great. And I am also supplying power for this circuit. And this circuit is not inhibiting the oscillation on the chip here, on the TL494. So we are fine and dandy. But we don't have anything on the output side. And the output side is very weird. Because that's how it looks like. That transformer, the rectifier. Center tap is connected through a shunt to the ground, but we, let's not talk about that. The output of the rectifier goes through a choke to the capacitor, then it goes to the drain of the MOSFET. All right. In this weird ass configuration, and the positive output, positive wire is right here on the source of the MOSFET. Here is the rectifier shotkey diode, then it snakes over here, 247 ohm resistors. This resistor is to limit the voltage to the fan, to drop some voltage to the fan, and here is a trace where I injected the power. That's auxiliary power supply for the LM3294 and the TL494 there. And the resistor which is burnt is this resistor which is in series. So if it's open, these transistors ain't gonna be able to be on. Why would you put this? I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of weird ass protection for the from from the reverse polarity. I think it is. Um, yeah, that makes sense, kind of, sort of. Because if you connect it right away around, you can turn on. Oh, this diode which is in parallel to the body diode of the MOSFET is contacting and everything is fine but if you connect the negative the battery here the body diode cannot contact and the MOSFET ain't gonna be contacting either but if it's connected the right way around it can be turned on via this bodgery I'm not sure but that's so weird what do you say I go and connect a 12 volt light bulb Cross the output capacitor, plug it in the mains and see what happens. I can almost guarantee you that it will work just fine. It's just the output section is not connecting for some reason. Well, because of that, I reckon. Okay, you can see it's connected right there. The, cro the crocs are not shorted. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Oh, look at that! Oh, nice! Very nice! So my assumption was correct. It is only this kind of thing of a jig which is bad. Let's measure the voltage on the output, just for the fun of it. Okay, let's do the same. Oh, I can if I find the cord. Ten volts. That's low. Hmm. Weird. 
All right, people, I actually found a schematic for it. It's a bit different, it's for PW325, but the part which we are interested in is the same. Well, this model uses two MOSFETs, not three, but as you can see, it is the same as I drew it. Not much different at all. As you can see, the op-amps, there is a thermistor, which I forgot to show. This schematic, by the way, is not the best, because you can see the drive transformer, the center tap on it is connected to nowhere, by some kind of voodoo, black magic, the transformer has some output, just if you hoik one end of it to ground, or the other one. You don't even need to, posit to supply a current into it, you just need to alternately pull the sides of the winding to ground and it will do something, oh boy. Oh boy, I need some to take some pills, my head hurts. Okay, I went outside, cleaned this scene a little bit, as you can see, not a little bit less dust, and on the other side I went with acetone and cleaned it quite nicely. You can see this area looks much better now. I'm kind of hoping that some of the oxides there so that crap might have been conductive and threw the voltage off. I can kind of bypass this in and <coughs> tell him to be more, you know, pay more attention when connecting. But he, look what I found there. I mean, like the whoever made this circuit is should have a nickname, Mister Bodge Lot. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ah, piece of fiberglass board as a shim. Nice. Again, for a hobby project, it's to I totally understand that. I ain't gonna tell anything about it. But something, a commercial product that you sell, give me a break. And look at this. This potentiometer is worn out a lot. And um, it is supposedly a 47k potentiometer, but it measures 2k on the outer legs. I don't know. I'm gonna go probably tech in a replacement and see what happens. But before that I'm gonna connect it as is, see, maybe that will change anything. Okay. Bulb connected, fan connected, mains connected. And I ain't gonna connect the multimeter, but when I muck around with this shaft <coughs> it sounds a little bit messy but when I move the shaft to the potentiometer here the voltage jumps to, to, feet, to about 18 volts and you will see the light bulb flash bright what's 18 volts? about 6 volts, 18 volts very nasty. So the problem is actually a potentiometer. That bastard. I'm gonna try to find a replacement for it now. It's already botched, so I might botch something else too. <laughs> it's out. The board looks very nice, but it is actually very crikey because you can see the plated through hole pulled out just fine. <laughs> And the track is damaged right there, but it's easily repairable. Here's a device, as you can see, B103, so that's a 10k pot. Very wobbly. I'm gonna replay tech in a, another 10k pot and see what happens. Okay, stuff is connected. There is a multimeter connected to it across the light bulb. The potentiometer is installed right there. The potentiometer, by the way, is fully counterclockwise. It's about 6 volts on the output, 7. Let's try to adjust it now. Oh yeah. Very touchy. Look at that, 19 volts. I think your battery ain't gonna like that. Well, that's about the voltage which I would charge the battery at. Oh boy. This is just... Very stupid 
let me load it up with something more grunty than that okay about 50 watt light bulb is right there and I'm gonna just go and connect my DMM in M meter mode across the across those transistors those drain to source and see what happens the LEDs by the way are supposedly an M meter you can see 3 amps, 3 amps, 9 amps and so on oh look at that not 0.2 volts <laughs> 300 milliamps Six hundred milliamps. Well, I don't like its behavior at all. But nothing gets hot so far, so let's see. Oh, look at that! We have we have a bulb glowing finally and it's 2 amps and you can see LED is glowing there if I put it right there and that's about 2.2 amps so <laughs> no it's not 3 amps and it's 5 volts 2 amps 10 volts mm -hmm. power and here it is delivering 12.9 and 3.66 only one LED is glowing and the bulb is nice and bright. Let me turn it off before it overheats. Or overshits, should I, should I say. Oh boy. Mm, barely starting to get warm. Yeah, barely warm. This place is 11 degrees, so that kind of helps. Uh, yeah. It works. Yay. It works as bad. Sorry, sorry. It works as good as it did. So yeah, 10k potentiometer, and it will be fine and dandy. But I need to figure out what to do with that goddamn protection circuitry. Okay, I put a new resistor right there. I turned it on, and it smoked, and I did not catch it. But for you guys, I'm just gonna put another resistor and burn it again, so you can see. By the way, the light bulb is still connected. There is nothing across the MOSFETs and there you can see a resistor which is clearly marked <coughs> so far. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Oh yeah, here is a money shot for you. <laughs> so something is fishy here. The MOSFETs are not shorted in any way, shape or form, so... Uh, I don't know... Weird... You know what? This uh, capacitor, ceramic chip might be shorted. That might cause excessive current to flow. If that via right there, which you can see goes to ground, then from the positive through a resistor diode through a shorted capacitor to ground so that's the only way i can see that this thing burning because 5.1k would limit the current there or maybe that we are right there which is square one is damaged is um shorted or something okay square we goes nowhere as you saw from the other side square we goes nowhere so we are pretty much down to this capacitor now. Okay, you can see what meter there. I'm gonna zoom in now. Whoops, wobbly footage. Here is that capacitor. Hope you can hear it. And sure enough. Sure enough it is shorted. Big surprise. See? That's what skills are for. You should understand basic stuff. You should know 
how to trace circuits, how the basic stuff works, how RC circuits works, how stuff, and some simple stuff like that. It really helps. Okay, I replace that capacitor with 10 microfarad 35 volt electrolytic because that's what the uh, schematic calls for 10 microfarad cap. You can see 33 ohm resistor replaced. I'm gonna check the diode right now. That one. Right, this one. See if it's not shorted. And if it's not, I'm gonna power it up and see. Okay, diode is fine. You can see the light bulb there. Nothing at all. To my surprise, it actually works if I crank it up. Red LED is glowing and the light bulb is too. Hmm. I'm quite intrigued now how does it turn on the MOSFETs there. So let's measure the voltage across gate to source and see. Maybe, you know, they actually take the power off before the choke right here. Maybe before the choke there are some nasty big ass spikes that get high enough to turn on the MOSFETs. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's put it up. See light bulb there. And across gate to source, if I want to block it. Fourteen volts. Oh yeah. Let's measure here. What the hell is that? It's quite bizarre. Let's measure according. If I measure in reference to ground, there's only five volts. Now, if I measure the gate in reference to ground, there is more than twenty volts. So there is some charge pump action going on. Bizarre. Okay, since that voltage there, it kind of surprised me. But now that I think about it, I think I kind of grasped the idea. However, I ain't gonna go and explain why and what, because I'm not sure about that idea. It seems legit, but first of all, I kind of don't like explaining stuff, especially stuff that I'm not sure is correct. Is correct. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave you here. Sorry is together here is the light bulb as it was i'm gonna sh cut the, a little bit of the shaft off and so the knob ain't gonna be that wonky but still you can see it adjust and stuff i don't know what is this supposed to do only thing it changes is the color of that led kinda start to suspect that this switch is marketing bullshit. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching. See ya.